I'm Drew. I'm Rich. And I'm Charles. And we're Midnight, Midnight Hellion. Hellion from Trenton, New Jersey. And you're watching Local, Local Band, Band Smokeout. Now we are joined. Man, the myth, the legend. Exactly that. Dylan, get away! Yeah, hell yeah! What's up, mate? Hell yeah, what? What's up, man? How what? are you? Hey, can you guys hear me? We can. Oh, sick. Awesome. Sorry, it took me forever to get set up. Hey, man, I'm good. I'm sorry. I'm trying to figure out this whole lighting situation because I realized I kind of look like I'm being interviewed for Gangland. So I'm kind of <laughs> trying to figure all this out. Maybe hey, uh, uh, you could use a phone flashlight. Um, I'm trying to turn on the turn up the brightness. Um, uh, shit. Hold on. Or you could put like a white screen in front of you. Just like, oh, eh. that, that fix it. Oh, yeah, I turned on the light. Oh, uh, my shit. girlfriend turned on the light. <laughs> hey, that, do you want to say hi, babe? That'll normally My girlfriend says hello. Sean hey, says hello. hello. Thank you. Thank you for uh, for turning on the light. We appreciate it. Dude, do me a, <laughs> a, a quick favor before we get started. Please introduce yourself. Let us know whereabouts in the world you are. Plug and promote anything. All right. What is up, nerds? My name is Dylan. I am the vocalist of a um, post-symphonic experimental country band called dead awake that's that's a joke i'm sorry um and i'm from the midwest i live in wisconsin at this current moment not going to give you my address um but yeah just huge shout out to uh puff tough um honeybee cannabis huge shout out to them um and yeah pretty much let's just rock and roll man i'm ready you to wanna go get high? hell yeah so you are very <laughs> four 420 friendly Absolutely, fucking Lulu, yes. Big do you, time, do you big recall time, your time. first smoking experience ever, and what was it out of? <laughs> I do, yeah. Um, it was like a super shitty... Um, I was living in Green Bay, and there was this place called Elf's, and it was the only place that didn't check IDs. <laughs> so it was like one of those really shitty metal pipes that was like $3. That sure. had like the big-ass bowl on the end and no carb or anything. Yeah, that was like that was like my first experience, and that was... That was something, man. Better than apple. <laughs> it's true. Or a can of soda. I actually prefer. I prefer apples. To be honest, I love smoking out of apples. It's just you adds know, there's little, something just natural about it. That's a little flavor. How do you how do you know this handsome gentleman here, uh, Sean? When was your first interaction with Sean and uh, and, and you know just how are you guys homies? Yeah. So um, I used to listen to I the Breather like a ton in high school. Um. And basically what happened was we got the opportunity to open up for them on their last tour at the Annex here in Madison. Um, and I was like, fuck yeah, I'll take it. Huge fan. Let's get it done. Um, so we played the show. We opened for it. Me and Sean didn't know each other at the time. You know, we just exchanged pleasantries, like good set, you know, all that stuff. Um, and then kind of just went our own ways. But then we opened up for, I think it was Spite, Sean. Was it Spite? Fuck yeah, it was. Yeah, so so we opened up for Spite at the Annex, and um, Sean was there, like, front row, dude, just, like, vibing. And I was like, holy shit, I know that dude. And after the set, he came up to me. He's like, hey, how do I, like, how do I know you? And I was like, oh, we opened up for you for uh, when you came through Fry the Breather. And then he told me he lived in Madison, and we ended up just smoking and having a couple drinks and talking and shooting the shit. And then... Rest is pretty much history, you know. They got us on the Soul Killer debut, which we're very, very, very fortunate to be a part of. Um, got me the feature for Soul Killer and everything like that, and yeah, it's been great ever since. We've hung out on like outside of shows a couple of times. We talk all the time. Like Sean's a homie, and it's crazy thinking about <laughs> how I used to listen to this dude fucking a decade ago, and here I am. <laughs> that is awesome, hell yeah, Sean. I know you got some questions for him. Big bombs. Oh shit, put me on the spot. I never come prepared, so I just kind of always go off the whim. Um, but I guess one thing I never really talked to you about or like really asked you is like, so like what were the first kind of bands that like really got you into, I guess, like the type of vocals you do? Because I know everybody always says like, well, you know, what are your, you know, current favorites or like what kind of band? But for me as a vocalist, it's always been like a vocalist that got me into 
the type right. of screening I do. Yeah, so um, <laughs> clown me all you want. It started out with Avenged Sevenfold. They were um, still are like highly regarded in my opinion as like one of my favorite bands. That's just a personal opinion. Um, could be nostalgia, could be whatever. What'd you but think of the new album? I fucking loved it, dude. I like actually really, really enjoyed it. I'm a huge prog nerd too, so um, I liked it because it just reminded me of like old school Kansas prog, like a bunch of random shit. And I honestly, I really liked it. I thought the musicianship was great. I thought that the writing was fantastic, you know, to each their own. And I totally understand why people wouldn't like it because it's really fucking weird. It's very <laughs> different for them, but I like when bands sometimes go that like experiment. Yeah, me route. too. It was really refreshing in my opinion, especially since the last thing we, I mean, the stage was great. I loved that album too. But like, I try to forget the Hill to the King exists. I'm not a big fan of that album at all. <laughs> I feel like they, as a band, have always been that band that like they're in like that metal genre, but they always release something where you listen to it the first time, you're like, "What the fuck is this?" And then like yeah. you hear it again and again, you're like, "I like it. Like yeah. I really fucking like it." And like I feel like a lot of people are scared to like cross that boundary of like that first listen, you know? They don't give it a second chance. Yeah, exactly. You know, it's just instant gratification shit. But honestly, like, like I said, dude, I totally get it. Like the singles they dropped, I was a big hater. I was a huge hater when nobody dropped. I was like, this sucks. This is boring. What the fuck is going on? And then I listened to the album as a whole and I was like, this makes so much sense. <laughs> like it is just it's great. Um, so sorry, I didn't mean to Sidebar. Oh, no worries. No worries. A7X for life, boys. Um, <laughs> and then, uh, basically, they got me into metal as a whole, pretty much. Um, my dad showed me, like, Disturbed and Black Sabbath. Black Sabbath is, like, probably my biggest old school influence. Fucking love Ozzy. Um, and Meatloaf, fun fact. But um, <laughs> after Avenged Sevenfold, I started getting into, like, the heavier shit when, like, Asking Alexandria was just popping on the scene. Um, they had that mix of like electronic music along with Attack Attack. So that was like a big thing for me for a while. And then it kind of just evolved into, um, I'd have to say, uh, Vincent from the Acacia Strain. And then the stereotypical Deathcore stuff. It would have to be like Alex Kaler from Chelsea Grin and Phil Bozeman from Whitechapel, dude. Even Scott from carnifex i discovered like all those bands at the same time and brought me into the world of deathcore you know and then i went to death metal and then you know you know how it goes but i would have to say those would probably be like my top five would be like m shadows um phil bozeman alex kaler danny warsnap and uh i forgot the other one i said vince yes all right were you were you prepped on the trivia portion of the show <laughs> I was not. I was told to bring hot sauce, and I have it in the fridge. I'm just, I'm nervous. <laughs> Definitely grab it. But while you, while you go grab it real quick, start thinking about exactly. what movie or TV show have you seen the most. Or if we ask okay. you trivia on this movie or TV show, okay, we okay, won't I'll be right you. back. Cool. And we're gonna fucking probably jam your jam. <laughs> we're, gonna, we're gonna jam that that jam jam right there. How about a little feral? We'll put them in this because uh, they're our guests. Automatically on. Before we do the trivia. Before yes. we do, and we actually played a song, uh, we played Vagabond earlier, but uh, an absolute slapper. Uh, before Thank we you. do the trivia, yep. I, I do want to ask a couple uh, questions to to uh, yourself uh, regarding vocals. Do you, can you sure. go through your, your pre-show warm-up? Because everybody's just different. Your pre-show yeah. warm-up, do you drink anything? Do you do you practice any in any way? And then post-show, let's say you have multiple shows, four and four days. How do you cool down after a set? Right. So um, vocally, this is probably bad, but I don't really do any like warm ups vocally besides like maybe um, like a couple growls here and there. Um, Sean's seen it. Usually I just kind of kick it with the boys and try to keep a level head because um, sometimes like the nerves really get to me depending on the show and stuff. So I usually just kick it with the boys and try to keep calm and then talk to anybody that's at the show. 
um, about 15 to 10 minutes, give or take, before the set. Um, while everybody's setting up and everything, I'll low key like find a mirror and just stare at myself, and just like. I don't know what it does, but just, like, staring myself in the eyes and just, like, thinking about all the bullshit that's, like, going on, you know, like... So you get angry. It's, yeah, so I get, like, really, really in the fucking zone. There was a while where, where, like, the band knew, like, if I came up and started pacing with my eyes, like, my head down, they knew not to talk to me for, like, 10 to 15 minutes until the set started. So I'll do that just to kind of get in the mood and get a little bit angry, and I'll just, like, let it all out throughout the set. Um, sometimes... Last show we played, actually the Soul Killer show, I dry scooped some pre workout for the first time, and that was <laughs> awesome. I was like, I was sweating bullets. I was, I like at first I was having a rough time, but oh my god, it got me through the set, dude. So, uh, I don't know. After that, you know, I'll have like a celebratory beer or two, um, and then just kind of sit back and try to catch my breath and try not to talk as loud as possible. If it's something where it's like four shows back to back to back to back i just usually try to like rest my voice as much as possible um just like in between the sets and stuff like that because i have lost my voice the first night on a tour before and that sucked so i try to avoid the shit out of that but yeah hot tea and honey too hot do, tea and honey do what, you hold sorry, on. Well, I'm, sorry. I'm, gonna let, I'm gonna let you ask a question john but uh what what did you decide uh so i can look up trivia on uh, the movie or tv show um Movie would probably be Interstellar, okay. and TV show, as cringe as it is, would probably be SpongeBob. Okay, and then uh, let's see the hot sauce. I got some ghost pepper blueberry. Shout out to uh, the boys and traders. This is their unhinged um, mango habanero hot sauce. Their merch guy is Seth. I've been following him on Snapchat and Instagram since I was like little shit. And I finally got to meet him, and he hooked me up with this bottle. So huge shout-out to Traders. Huge shout-out to Seth. And uh, let's hope my IBS doesn't kick in. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead and uh, uh, ask your uh, your question, Sean. Oh. Um, so, like, I noticed before you went on stage, like, it, it kind of, like, all makes sense to me now. You, like, you know, you get all these proper emotions before you walk on stage. And then I noticed the last time we played with you, like, you're like, the first thing you do when you walk on stage is you apologize. And to me, man, like, that's fucking beautiful. Um, it, like, you are letting people know first and foremost, you know, I don't, I'm not calling you a bitch. You know, I'm not saying fuck you. You know, I'm not trying to fight you, but I'm getting these emotions out. Like, is this something that, like, I, I mean, I do, do you plan on doing this? Just, like, is that, like, you're just driving force for every show when you start yeah i mean nobody is like i've been asked this question before um nobody's like ever come up to me and been like i'm mad at you because you called me a bitch on stage or something you yeah. know it's just like i've seen a couple looks in the crowd when i do it that's like oh that's kind of weird you know what i mean so um yeah. and a lot of the times i'm not talking to a bunch of crowd members while i'm chilling before the show you know um, and anybody who knows me personally knows I'm not just going to go out of my way to call somebody a bitch. I mean, Sean, I think you can vouch for that. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So like, it's just, I get like really hype and sometimes I lose control, not like control, but I get like really hyped to the point where I'm like insulting people. Cause I want them to get mad. Like I want them to get up and, you know, celebrate and shit, but it's not like a personal thing. It's just like the feeling of the music that really gets me going. So, um, yeah. I like doing it. I think it's I think it's good. Just kind of clears my conscience a little bit. Um, I think it really kind of, in my personal opinion, lets people know like they're welcome. You know, I don't want to alienate anybody at any point. Like anybody that listens to our music or doesn't or is just there. You know, like yeah, be comfortable. I'm not calling you a bitch. It's just something that I do, and it's a good bit too. I love when people like <laughs> laugh and they're like, you know you know I like doing that shit. So I don't know if I'm gonna do it in the future. Um, I'm starting to kind of take, uh, like a less vocal, like talky approach to the sets and everything. Kind of just like working on the whole like physical presence of it. Um, just for like vocal longevity and stuff. But yeah, we'll see what happens. Let's see if we can stump you here on this SpongeBob trivia. In the SpongeBob SquarePants movie, what is the name of the fish? that SpongeBob gives cheese to 
in his dream. Which SpongeBob movie is it? The first one or the It does the newer not one? specify. Okay. There's can only it probably doesn't happen in both movies, I would guess. No, yeah. Um Phil. Mother f That is correct. <laughs> Hell yeah. Hell yeah. You did not have to do the hot sauce. Damn it. <laughs> yeah, because he's like, you got a family, Phil? <laughs> that's just, that's all I heard in my head. I had to do the ghost pepper hot sauce. My man. Dylan, what are you allowed to tell us that you have lined up either the remainder of this year or early next year? I know sometimes you can't say certain things for timing reasons and whatnot, but what are you allowed to tell us that we can look forward to regarding the band? Hell yeah, late October, we're playing a couple of shows with Weeping Wound, the boys out in Florida. <laughs> um, so we're we're actually playing a show with Soul Killer um, in Wisco here. Um, we're going to play with them and everything. I think it's at a place called Dub R. Um, we're also playing at the WC Social Club in West Chicago um, for a heavy Halloween fest. We basically had two tours, um, and they decided to mold them together. So it's just like one giant fuck fest of just like a shit ton of bands um in fairies playing first fragment one of my favorite tech death bands ever is playing um i think it's it's gonna be sick um we might have a couple more shows lined up we're working on a release show and everything and trying to get all the logistics going for that um and then maybe a single before the year ends i can't guarantee it but we have one ready to go we got one in the tank um it was something that was supposed to be on feral but you know, life happened and I couldn't get the vocals tracked in time. So um, we'll see. We'll see what happens. But yeah, just a couple of shows. Nothing too crazy. Um, we're working on a new record. So, yeah. I got one more question, then I'll let Sean uh, ask one or two and to send it off. But uh, how does Feral different from Vile? Like, was there, yeah, was there a different process that you guys went through in the creation portion of it? Yeah, for sure. So, um Vile was a labor of love for all of us. We absolutely loved it. We wanted to take more of like an aggressive and kind of death metal sounding approach to it. Um, and it worked out really well, but I think it just varies in the kind of like metal that is on that record specifically. Like we got some spots with cleans and then we got like some alpha wolf type, like new metal core shit. And then we got like IUD chim where it's just like blast beats, you know? Um, so this one was just like a centralized, like let's make this an ass beater, just heavy as fuck. So we just kind of, me and Michael got really into death metal, like at the same time. So like 200 stab wounds, sangui sicka bog, all that shit. Um, and we're like, let's make some shit like that. So then we just made pure aggressive, angry shit, and that was like basically what was going on in our brains. Was like we got to make some angry shit. So it was just, it's like our most cohesive record in that sense, to where it's just like it kind of sticks to one area. Um, so the writing process was definitely a little bit different just because we're not used to, we're used to just doing whatever the fuck we want and then throwing it on a record, you know, and we still did that with this, but definitely took more of a death metal kind of approach to it and took our time with it. So, hell yeah. Well, Dylan, I appreciate your time. I know Sean's got one or two more for you, but dude, thank you uh, for, for doing this and just being a down to earth homie, man, for real. Music's yeah, no badass. problem. Thank you. Thanks so much for having me on, dude. This is awesome. I've heard, I've like, I'm a huge fan of your work. I've been hearing about you for fucking years, dude. So keep doing what you're doing. Literally, like, helps keep like people like me and Sean afloat. You know, a shout out to Chat if anybody's in there. Uh, love y'all. Stay in there. Hell yeah. I appreciate the kind words, man. Sean, I know you got one or two more. I just want to ask one, honestly, and I think it's it's very fitting for this channel. I want to know your top three strains. Oh, brother. You want to get high? <laughs> All right. So, number one, first and foremost, Lavender Jones. Oh, my God. I've never even I'm heard a... of that strain. Rhythm, Dude, baby. Listen, bro. I, I'm not going to tell you the whole story, but basically, I'm a huge hybrid guy. Okay. Um, Just because sativas make me super anxious, and indicas also make me anxious just because I feel like I can't move. So, like... I totally a little get it. bit of both. Yeah, a little bit of both is perfect. Like I want enough to relax, but also be like, so I can watch SpongeBob and geek out about it. You know what <laughs> right, I mean? Right. Uh, so basically, Lavender Jones is an indica leaning hybrid that I found at a dispo in Illinois when I was in college, and I went outside from my apartment with my friend, and we were just smoking, 
I took like two hits of this. It was like a beautiful, like rainy night. You know, nobody was outside. It was so calm. And I just like remember looking at the light post and being like, I feel like I'm in a Kid Cudi music video right now. And that's literally just how it felt. And it, that's the only way I could describe it. And every I literally like saved that shit for as long as I could. But it was so good. So Lavender Jones, first and foremost. Holy shit, it's amazing. <laughs> um, second, I'd have to say Gelato. Um, you know, just a standard hybrid. You Definitely. know, it's always, always good. It has a distinct really good smell, one. too. Yeah. Tastes Honestly, fair. it's like, yeah, it's really nice. Um, and then my third's got to be Fruity Pebbles. <laughs> Sean, Sean put me on to Fruity Pebbles, and that shit was gas. Like, it literally just, like... Oh my god, dude! It was so good. The infamous fruity pebbles. Yes, the infamous the fucking like Saiyan pebbles because they were strong as fuck for some reason. <laughs> the gift you got for the music video. Yeah, dude. Yeah, he's <laughs> Sean smoked me up after we did the blacklist music video, and my girlfriend was. I was planning to just go home and relax, but my girlfriend was at the state fair, so she's like, "You should come out to the fair." So I drove from Madison to Chicago for this. Or Schaumburg, right? Uh. Sure. Yeah. Whatever. Sure. Yeah. A suburb of Chicago. And then my girlfriend's like, come to the state fair in Milwaukee. And I was like, so high that I was like, fuck it. Sure. So I fucking like, drove all the way out to Milwaukee. It was about yeah. like two hours. Yeah. So I, it took me like an hour to get to the shoot and then another two hours to go to Milwaukee. And I hadn't like, I didn't even have a, or no, I did have a backpack just in case. Cause I knew I was going to get FOMO, but I was, I was like, I'll calm down before I get there. I got two hours. Dude, I was still fucking zooted when I got there and for like an hour after. And like, I'm not like a stoner stoner or anything, but I smoke, you know, and that's not something that I'm used to. So I was literally just like walking (laughs) around like with my girlfriend's parents and they were like buying me beers and shit. And I'm trying to just like not be super stoned and I'm still (laughs) in my like. I'm still in my music video fit, so I'm just, like, in all black, like, overalls and a black t-shirt in the middle of state fair, so I'm, like, walking around all these hicks and shit, and I was, like, laughing like crazy, dude. It yeah, was, it was just hilarious. Low-key, uh, just, just, you know, best weed cult- cultivators. <laughs> yeah, dude. Honestly, like, huge, huge fan. I won't give the name, but this dude, fucking gruesome. Good fucking shit, and it was... It was awesome. Some of the best shit I've ever smoked. So, well, we'll have to get you more, man. No, oh, dude, I would gladly. I will gladly take some whenever. <laughs> Hell yeah. Well, well, Dylan yeah. and and Sean, I appreciate you both, gentlemen. Uh, Dylan, actually, I have something like a like a fun side project that Sean's been involved in that I think that you would fit Ooh. in perfectly if if you're ever down. I'll I'll show you something. I'll send it in the group yeah. chat. But, uh, Hell yeah, dude. Send it over. All right, cool. That'd be sick. Uh, I got nothing but time, and we're independent, so I don't got to answer to nobody. I'll word. do what I want. Hell yeah. Party people! I love it. Well, dude, thank you so much. Uh, this will be on YouTube tomorrow if it's cool with you. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, guys. Hell yeah. Thank you, Dylan cool. of uh, yeah, Dead Weight. Thank you, Sean. Soul killer. Gentlemen, I appreciate you both. Have a fantastic day, and uh, just just keep doing keep doing the damn thing. Keep, make, keep making awesome music, and uh, we look forward to to the, the next single from, from Soul Killer next month. Dylan, I, I think you said October is the next single? Um, October is the shows. We might drop a single in between there, Dom. Perfect. So. Hell yeah. Oh, oh. Well, you fellas have a great day. I appreciate you. Oh, yeah. yeah. Thanks, buddy. Love you. Hell. Let's go! Hi, what's up, Welcome to the local band, Smokeout.